Hi there, it's James Arter here. I hope you're doing really well. So Logic's Quick Sampler is a really, really powerful tool. I wanna to show you a few of the basics on how to create a playable software instrument out of loops that you already have and also audio that you're playing yourself. Stick around, I'll show you how it's done. As always, if you liked the video, please hit the like and the subscribe and you'll be notified of any upcoming videos. Also, if you sign up to the mailing list, I'll send you a bunch of free stuff, which is an EQ cheat sheet and a selection of one shot drum samples that you can use in your mixes. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna show you just how quickly you can get started. And firstly, I'll be just grabbing any sort of loop and just creating my own beat out of it. So I've got a fresh session. And first, all you need to do is find some audio. There are so many ways you can do it. You can either bring up your project audio bin over here and then import a file. So let's go add audio file. Here I've got about a gazillion loops. I'm gonna start over here and just, just find something to play with. That'll do, add that into the session. But one thing to note is you don't actually have to add it into the session. The other way to do it is to just go to your finder. I've gone to the same place over here and grab a loop and you can just grab it and you can just import it into the session that way. But we're gonna, we're gonna do it my original way of importing it into the session first. So we've got the loop here. And firstly, you need to create the instrument. So grab that loop, bring it right over here and then you'll get a few options of what you can do with it. If you go to quick sampler optimized, then half the work will be done for you. So let's look at that. And just as a quick overview, you've got a few different options how to play back this loop. So classic, if you just hit a key on your controller keyboard, it's gonna play back all at different speeds, depending on where you hit the key. Beautiful, that might be useful. One shot, if you hit that, it's not gonna stop when you take off your finger gonna play the whole loop through. But this is a fun one that we're gonna use, Slice. As soon as you do that, it creates a load of different transient markers. And as you can see here, it's showing different note values. So that means that when I press a corresponding key, it's gonna play back that individual part of the loop. Let's just have a little look. Simple, now we can record that in. Not my best work, but you get the idea. And as you can see, that has appeared immediately down the bottom there, just as if you're playing in an instrument. Just gonna quantize that and have a little look. So already we've got something started there, but I'm gonna show you some other things that you can do with it. So I'm gonna take the same process, but control it in a slightly different way. And this time I'm just gonna import something from my finder. And let's go with, what does he sound like? Okay, we're gonna use that one, that'll do. And do exactly the same thing, drag it over to the left. Wait for those options to appear, go for quick sampler optimized. And as you can see, we've got a loop there. What if we wanna use some of that loop and not, actually, and not actually cut it up this time? Well, the only problem at the moment is it's not playing back in the same tempo, which is no good if we wanna sync it up with the other loop. So if we go over here and hit the flex, and now, you see a little option lights up next to it says follow tempo. So now when we play it back, it's playing back in the right tempo. And now when I try it, when I play a different key, it's gonna be lower in pitch. And of course, with this particular setting in classic, when you take your finger off, it stops playing. So let's just play that along with, with a click and we're, we're just gonna see what happens. Okay, again, not my best work, but as you can see, the MIDI information has appeared. There it is. I'm just gonna quantize that. And let's just, let's just bring it into the other loop and see what happens. There instantly we've got something a little bit more interesting going on. If you hear both of those together. See that there's two different ways of playing back that loop. Let's try something else. 
Now this isn't limited to drum loops. You can use it for basically any audio. So I'm gonna get something totally different this time. Okay, and I'm gonna show you a slightly different method of how to do it. If we'll add a software instrument track and then insert a quick sampler. So this is the other way to add a file. You can just click up on a loader here, load audio file, and then it's gonna come up with the same dialogue as before. So you can look for the one you wanna import. I was gonna find something totally different. Beautiful, that sounds horrible, let's use that. Uh, we're gonna again go with optimized. It means it's gonna do half of the work for you, which is fantastic. And now as you'll see, when you play a key in the keyboard, you start to play that loop. Not very interesting, but we're gonna do something interesting with it. So let's hit slice again. This isn't a very transient piece, so a lot of it isn't gonna make much musical sense, but it doesn't matter when we're not really going for that at the moment, we're just trying to do something that's creative, but it will give me an opportunity to show you something which is very useful. As it stands, when you, when you play a key, it's gonna play until the end of that transient marker, which was fine for drums because they, it was generally one shots. But at this point with, with the longer notes, you might you might want it to, to stop when you take your key off. So if you just hit gate over here, it will do exactly that. Right, and now again, we've got something else that we can play with. I'm just gonna make something up. It's probably gonna be terrible. told you it'd be terrible but again we've got all of the information already loaded in right there for you of course if you want to just change these notes you easily can because now you're, you're just playing with midi so it doesn't really matter what you do let's have a little listen and see how magnificent that's sounding now I don't think it's gonna be a number one, but I've heard worse. Okay, now I've got one more way that I wanna show you to create a software instrument out of this sampler track. Right, so lastly, I'm gonna show you another method which is recording in your own audio. Same as before, create a software instrument track, add in quick sampler, here we go, but this time we're gonna be clicking recorder. Now you can record anything into this, it doesn't matter. I happen to be using a guitar, but you can, it's anything that you're putting into Logic. So it can be voices, it can be drums, it can be whatever you like. The main thing is to just make sure that you choose the correct input that you're gonna be recording through. Here we go, so in my case it's Spidif, and then you'll notice the meter showing up here. Make sure you're getting something in, and then to hear what's going on, just hit monitor. Beautiful. And now if you want, you can just record along with the track. So if that's in that case, just hit play and then you choose record here. Or what I'm gonna do, because I'm just, like I said, trying to keep things a little bit creative, I'm just gonna do it totally free and then try and create something out of what I've got. So hit record and it will start recording. I'm just gonna make something up. That'll do, it has absolutely no relevance to the track, but that's not what is important here. Um, so here we go, this is what I played. All at different speeds and different pitches, but I'm gonna use slice and hit gate like before, and then just find something fun to play with. I like that because it doesn't really sound like a guitar. So now, same as before, let's make something up. That will do. Same again, let's quantize that. Of course, it doesn't sound particularly amazing, but let's see if we can just do something interesting with it.
go. Doesn't sound a great deal like a guitar anymore. And to be fair, that's not my best work. But, you know, if you want that loop, you can have that for free. Uh, but that's not the point. The, the point is that you can just throw anything into this and just start getting creative with it. Like I say, it doesn't have to be a guitar. It can be a voice. It can be drums. It can be whatever you're recording in. And if what you were playing turned out to not be in tune, there's a really useful feature right here where you can just adjust the pitch. So let's just have a look. I'm going to maybe go down an octave or something. <laughs> Great, but you can get it in tune to your track or you can just totally destroy stuff, whatever you want to do. So that should hopefully be enough to give you the basics on using Logic's quick sampler. I've only scratched the surface at the moment because it's so powerful with what it can do, but at least now you should be able to bring in your own loops as well as recorded audio and just start creating. If that was useful, give us a thumbs up, maybe leave a comment in the comment sections below. And if you wanna know about more upcoming videos, just hit subscribe. Okay, bye for now, thanks for watching.